son Nancy. Yes. I'm working on this video about okay. the song that you're named after by Jack Stauber and the John and Nancy John song. Nancy. It's a, a, almost 600,000 views on YouTube right now. Really? Yeah. And nobody really knows that it's named after you. So yeah. I'm trying to make something about Rossi's that's connecting it yeah. with the song because no one really knows. Nobody really knows. So. How many views? 600,000 almost. Is that right? Wow. Yeah. That's really Jack Stauber is an artist that thrives in obscurity. His ability to transform and combine underutilized art mediums into an uncanny chimera of sight and sound has become his trademark. His music is just as unusual. Jack's unique singing style, coupled with the use of cryptic samples, has had fans speculate the true meaning behind his lyrics. Little's peanuts. Me, not you. Oftentimes, it's hard to decipher what the official lyrics even are, let alone their meaning, leading to even further speculation. This uncertainty is an aspect that I'm sure Jack is well aware of, and adds to that mysterious aesthetic that he's nurtured so closely. Despite this, sometimes Jack will pull back the curtain and reveal some interesting details about his creative process. One such example is an exclusive interview in issue 2 of Friday Magazine, released a few months after his album High Low. Friday asks, You use real audio clips on some of your tracks like Pizza Boy and John and Nancy. Where do you find those audio tracks? Are they from your own life? Jack responds, Some I record myself. Nancy is announcing her buck-a-bag sale at the beginning of that track. I owe so much to those two. I'm not sure if they know their impact yet. <laughs> Rewind back to February 2001, Lowe's Cineplex goes bankrupt, and dozens of movie theaters are left abandoned or demolished. One such theater in North Versailles, Pennsylvania, opened their doors in November of 1999, and then promptly shut their doors just over a year later. The poor location, doubled with the far more successful Distinta Megaplex just a few miles away, spelled defeat for this unfortunate theater. But from the ashes rose something peculiar. About a year later, Rossi's pop-up marketplace brought life back into the abandoned cineplex. A unique flea market where each theater is a retail space that can be rented and operated by anybody with enough junk to fill it with. We got fried shrimp, fried chicken nibbles, nachos and cheese with jalapenos or make them supreme. Ah yes. There are also a variety of food vendors as well. For the past six years, Rossi's has been one of my favorite places to visit on the weekend. I've even come to know a few of the regular vendors. Most have come and gone, but one very prominent husband and wife stood out among the rest. During the week, they'd do household liquidation, accumulating a myriad of unwanted objects, which they'd bring to Rossi's on the weekends to stock their shelves. Due to the boundless amount of pre-owned items they'd acquire, they would often have long lines of tables filled with picture frames, books, decorations, all below a sign that said free, written in bold letters. The things that weren't free were modestly priced, and they'd often make great deals on some lightly used but still nice quality items, including musical equipment. That husband and wife duo are very popular figures among the Rossi's community. Their names, of course, are John and Nancy. 
Sometime in 2018, they both retired from their liquidation job, and their theater space was taken over by Brian, who, as far as I know, is the boss of Rossi's. While John is at home enjoying his retirement, doing carpentry, Nancy was hired by Brian to supervise the old John and Nancy store space. So really nothing much changed aside from John and Nancy's becoming Brian's, and also Nancy is here too. Nevertheless, I'd always look forward to seeing what kind of new things they'd bring in each weekend. And as it turns out, so did a certain bearded fellow from Pittsburgh. Fast forward to April 14th, 2018, Hilo had just come out. I was listening to it for the first time in the car, so I couldn't see the song titles. It's also worth mentioning that I'd only just discovered Jack's music a month prior, so I didn't know he lived in Pittsburgh at the time. I was on my way to a convention to sell my handmade vinyl record clocks. As a side note, my main source of vinyl records was straight from John and Nancy themselves. There was no better place to get a surplus of undesirable albums to repurpose into furniture. How's it going, Nancy? Now listen, are you still doing the record album? A little bit. I've got a lot at okay. home, though. Alright, because I'm ready to get rid of all this. Thing. Yeah, I want them to go. If it weren't for Nancy, my traveling artist career wouldn't be nearly as lucrative. This all might seem irrelevant now, but it makes sense later on, so stay with me, please. Anyways, I was riding along, enjoying the music, when suddenly, I heard it. It couldn't be. And yet... It was unmistakable. A radio commercial that played every single day at Rossi's. Brian's fresh fruit, including red ripe delicious strawberries. It's iconic. What an astounding coincidence, I thought to myself. This Jack Stauber guy must have visited Rossi's, and in doing so shined a small beacon of light on this otherwise obscure place. I wonder what the song is called. Okay, now, this is huge. Either every copy of Hilo was personalized, or this is the most stunning revelation of my adult life. I didn't hear it at first, but you can absolutely hear Nancy in the background of that sample. Does Nancy know? Does anybody know? I had to find out. Maybe somebody in the YouTube comments section who also visited Rossi's made the connection. Oh, Stranger Things, of course. <laughs> that's, uh, that's wrong. No, wait, what's this? This song had to be about John and Nancy Alford. Bless their hearts. John and Nancy Alford? In March of 2018, two people broke into the home of the Alfords, attacking John and later killing Nancy after trying to extort money from her. The details are a bit hazy, but the subject matter lines up pretty easily with the somber tone of the song. If I didn't know any better, I would have said this theory is pretty solid. However, as someone points out, it's pretty unlikely that Jack made the song in the span of one month from the date of the incident to the release of High Low. Although it wouldn't be the first time Jack uploaded something eerily topical very shortly after a certain disastrous event. But while the Alfred story is tragic, their connection to the song is more than likely an unfortunate coincidence. I think it's more likely the subject of the song is unrelated to Rossi's or anyone with the names John or Nancy, apart from the title. Then again, there's no way I could prove that. A few months down the line, we got that Friday Magazine interview, giving everyone that tiny hint about the sample. While some of the more studious Jack fans were able to make some educated assumptions based on this information, I still couldn't find a single mention of Rossi's. In fact, Rossi's online presence is borderline non-existent. They've got about 2,500 Facebook followers, but from what I can tell, that seems to be the scope of its popularity. For the fun of it, I thought I'd check posts from 2018. 
But, of course, no mention of Jack or Hilo. It's at this moment I realize I may be the only one that knows the truth about this sample. In order to pursue this mystery further, there were just two people I knew I had to talk to, Nancy and Jack himself. The very next weekend, I ran over to Rossi's to confront Nancy. I wasn't really sure how to begin, so I started off by simply asking if she knew a musician named Jack Stauber. She didn't know the name, but as soon as I showed her a picture of his beautiful beardy face, she instantly recognized him. I followed up by showing her the sample and telling her about the song. To my surprise, this was her first time hearing about it. She was just as impressed by it as I was. This whole situation felt so surreal. It's as if a lovingly handcrafted treasure map gently floated from the heavens into my open palms, and by sheer coincidence, I was standing directly on top of the X. All that was left to do was dig. I had to meet Jack. And so I did. May 19th, 2018. Red Fishbowl, a Pittsburgh-based art collective, was having their annual Lawrenceville Art Crawl. It's this really big art fair that stretches across one of the biggest neighborhoods in Pittsburgh. Artists, musicians, and performers alike all set up tables from one end of the street to the other. And one way or another, I found out Jack was going to be there, opening for a band at a bar called Spirit. At this point, I was pretty obsessed with his stuff, so I was very excited to meet him and tell him how much his work inspired me, in a completely restrained and cool way. Not to mention to cap off the John and Nancy arc. I got there at 3 p.m. sharp, ready to absorb some art. The official maps they had around said Jack would be there at 8, but unbeknownst to me, this was misleading. I'll get into that later. The first thing I did was try to look for some kind of event organizer to ask about the schedule. No such luck there, but I did buy this sick t-shirt. For the next four hours or so, I wandered up and down the street, occasionally taking shelter from the rain in some random independent business. It was a pleasant stroll, but I got the feeling I should probably head back towards Spirit. Somebody there would probably be able to tell me about Jack. But then, something completely unexpected occurred. And when I say this, it is by no means an exaggeration. A car pulls up to the intersection 10 meters in front of me, and somebody gets out. Just like that, I found myself standing behind Jack, who was walking towards Spirit, same as me. I was stunned. I had no clue how to proceed, so I just sort of stayed a safe distance behind and pretended to look at art. He was carrying a bunch of bags, so bothering him really didn't feel appropriate. But he was stopping to admire the art, and if I stopped moving too, I'd look real suspicious, so before I knew it, I was standing right beside him. My mind was a total blank. I finally found Jack, but I couldn't just drop the whole story on him there and then. But I couldn't squander this incredible encounter either. In the span of about three seconds, my brain had made a compromise with my mouth, and I spoke to him. Hey, uh, Jack Stauber, right? Oh, yeah. Me and my friends really like your videos. Oh, thanks, man. He dropped his bags and shook my hand. You're, uh, gonna be playing at the Spirit later on, yeah? Yep. Awesome. Can't wait to see you there. Cool. See ya. Bye. He continued down the street towards Spirit. I got super anxious and trailed off in the opposite direction. In the heat of the moment, I totally forgot to ask him what time he was performing. But after a brief moment to compose myself, I made my way back towards Spirit. As it turned out, the second floor of the bar was set up as a big concert area, with a few artist tables hanging out in the corner. This was where the band was going to be playing, and where Jack would be opening. So I thought I'd stick around here for a while, maybe catch him before the show to ask him about Rossi's. I waited around in here for about an hour. I had a really nice chat with one of the artists, and at some point I casually mentioned Jack. Luckily, the artist was also a fan, and they told me he'd be performing downstairs around 6 or 7. Downstairs? 6 or 7? I look at the time. It's 6.45. I hear the backtrack of Beard playing in the distance. 
Oh shit. I rushed down the stairs. Suddenly, the first floor is popping, and Jack was there, jiving on the corner stage. This was bliss. After an incredible 45 minute performance, he packed his stuff and set up a bunch of pop food and high low CDs on a table in the back. After the crowd died down, I made my move and shimmied into the corner with him. I complimented his performance and I bought a copy of Pop Food and High Low, both of which he generously signed for me. I told him how much I loved his recent Inchman Extended, and if for the heck of it, I asked him as impartially as I could what the lyrics to the chorus were. To paraphrase, his response was basically, ah, <laughs> I'll never tell. While we were talking, another band got up on the corner stage and began playing very loudly. It became pretty hard to hear each other speak, but now was the moment I had been building up in my head for a whole month. I was not about to back down now. I flipped over the high-low CD, pointed to the song, and I shouted, I've been to Rossi's! I know John and Nancy! Jack's face lit up, and he smiled warmly at me. He came up close and spoke firmly into my ear. He told me that all the bags he was using to carry his equipment were from John and Nancy. They had given him so many amazing deals to help him out in his own artistic endeavors. Without them, he said, he wouldn't be able to do these live shows as much as he was. In this short conversation, Jack had presented himself so humbly, so purely. Between the two of us, this little hole-in-the-wall flea market had provided us both with so much happiness, and in no small part to that generous and friendly couple with their theater full of junk. Years have passed since Hilo was released, and the John and Nancy sample is still just as shrouded in mystery as always. For a time, I thought, maybe that's for the best. After all, it's that mystery that adds so much appeal to Jack's work. To reveal the answer to that mystery felt like a betrayal. But judging by the current state of affairs, the future feels very uncertain. And I thought this may have been my last chance to tell the world about this special place. And I have Jack to thank for making it a little more special to me. So, thanks Jack, for everything. I hope you enjoyed the video. I've had all this on my mind for a very long time now, and I'm happy to finally share it with you all. And there's a lot of loud cars outside, and I'm not... Yeah. There it goes. Okay. Special thanks to my friend Kiro Kami for editing this video. I wouldn't have been able to finish it without their help. I've filmed a lot more footage of Rossi's and other flea markets that I'd like to make into a series of thrifting videos for the channel. If that sounds compelling to you, please consider liking, commenting, and possibly subscribing. If you enjoyed me talking about Jack, I have some other stories and opinions that I'd love to share with you all as well. There goes another car. <clears throat> Oh, if you like my funny little illustrations, I'm also making a webcomic that you can read right now on Topastic and Webtoon. I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a peek. Bye now.